Chapter 9 A Tiger in the House Page number 58 One Grandfather finds a tiny tiger cub in the forest and brings him home Two Grandmother calls him Timothy and brings him like a human child Three Timothy is playful and naughty His companions are Toto the monkey a puppy and the other members of the household now the story timothy the tiger cub was discovered by grandfather in the terai jungle near dehra one day when grandfather was strolling down the forest path at some distance from the rest of the party he discovered a little tiger about 18 inches long hiding among the intricate roots of a banyan tree grandfather picked him up and brought him home he had the distinction of being the only member of the party to have bagged any game dead or alive at first the tiger cub who was named timothy by grandfather was brought up entirely on milk given to him in a feeding bottle by our cook mahmud but the milk proved too rich for him and he was put on a diet of raw mutton and cod liver oil to be followed later by a more tempting diet of pigeons and rabbits timothy was provided with two companions toto the monkey who was bold enough to pull the young tiger by the tail page number 59 and then climb up the curtains if timothy lost his temper and the small mongrel puppy found on the road by grandfather at first Timothy appeared to be quite afraid of the puppy and darted back with a spring if it came to near he would make absurd dashes at it with his large four paws and then retreat to a ridiculously safe distance finally he allowed the puppy to crawl on his back and rest there one of timothy's favorite amusements was to stalk anyone who would play with him and so when i came to live with grandfather i became one of the tiger's favorites with a crafty look in his glittering eyes and his body crouching he would creep closer and closer to me suddenly making a dash for my feet rolling over on his back and kicking with delight and pretending to bite my ankles he was by this time the size of a full grown retriever and when i took him out for walks people on the road would give us a wide berth when he pulled hard on his chain i had difficulty in keeping up with him his favorite place in the house was the drawing room and he would make himself comfortable on the long sofa page number 60 reclining there with great dignity and snarling at anybody who tried to get him off Timothy had clean habits and would scrub his face with his paws exactly like a cat. He slept at night in the cook's quarters and was always delighted at being let out by him in the morning. Some words here: darted means moved or rushed suddenly. Retreat means go back. Stalk means move stealthily towards. Crafty means cunning. retriever means a breed of a dog trained to retrieve game in hunting give us a wide berth means keep a safe distance from us comprehension check 1 he had the distinction of being the only member of the party to have bagged any game the phrase in italics means 1 grandfather was the most distinguished member of the party 2 grandfather was the only sports person in the party 3 grandfather was the only successful member of the hunting party make the right answer 2 complete the following sentences 1 toto climbed up the curtains when blank 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 2 blank blank i became one of the tiger's favorites 3 timothy had clean habits blank blank some points as timothy grows up he becomes less friendly and rather dangerous
Two, grandfather decides to transfer him to the Jew. Three, six months later, grandfather pays Timothy a visit. Timothy is happy to see grandfather. Or is he? Now the story continues. One of these days, declared grandmother in her prophetic manner, we are going to find Timothy sitting on Mahmud's bed and no sign of the cook except his clothes and shoes. Page number 61 Of course, it never came to that. But when Timothy was about six months old, a change came over him. He grew steadily less friendly. When out for a walk with me, he would try to steal away to stalk a cat or someone's pet dog. Sometimes at night, we would hear frenzied cackling from the poultry house. And in the morning, there would be feathers lying all over the veranda. Timothy had to be chained up more often. And finally, when he began to stalk Mahmud about the house with what looked like villainous intent, grandfather decided it was time to transfer him to a zoo. Reserving a first-class compartment for himself and Timothy, no one would share a compartment with them. Grandfather took him to Lucknow, where the zoo authorities were only too glad to receive as a gift a well-fed and fairly civilized tiger. About six months later, when my grandparents were visiting relatives in Lucknow, grandfather took the opportunity of calling at the zoo to see how Timothy was getting on. I was not there to accompany him, but I heard all about it when I returned to Dehera. Arriving at the zoo, grandfather made straight for the particular cage in which Timothy had been interned. The tiger was there, crouched in a corner, full grown, and with a magnificent striped coat. Hello, Timothy, said grandfather, and put his arm through the bars of the cage. The tiger approached the bars and allowed grandfather to put both hands around his head. Grandfather stalked the tiger's forehead and tickled his ears, and, whenever he growled, smacked him across the mouth, which was his old way of keeping him quiet. Some words, frenzied, means loud and frantic. Cackling, means noise, made by hens. Villainous intent, means Wicked and dangerous plan or idea. Interned means kept. Smacked means hit tightly. Page number 62. Now the story. He licked grandfather's hand and only sprang away when a leopard in the next cage snarled at him. Grandfather shooed the leopard away and the tiger returned to lick his hands. But every now and then the leopard would rush at the bars and he would slink back to his corner. A number of people had gathered to watch the reunion when a keeper pushed his way through the crowd and asked Grandfather what he was doing. I am talking to Timothy, said Grandfather. Weren't you here when I gave him to the zoo six months ago? I haven't been here very long, said the surprised keeper. Please continue your conversation, but I have never been able to touch him myself. He is always very bad-tempered. Why don't you put him somewhere else? suggested Grandfather. That leopard keeps frightening him. I will go and see Superintendent about it. Page number 63 Grandfather went in search of the Superintendent of the zoo, but found that he had gone home early. And so, after wandering about the zoo for a little while, he returned to Timothy's cage to say goodbye. It was beginning to get dark. He had been stalking and slapping Timothy for about five minutes when he found another keeper observing him with some alarm. Grandfather recognized him as the keeper who had been there when Timothy had first come to the zoo. You remember me, said Grandfather. Now, why don't you transfer Timothy to another cage away from this stupid leopard? But, sir, stammered the keeper, it is not your tiger. I know, I know, said grandfather. I realize he is no longer mine. But you might at least take a suggestion or two from me. I remember your tiger very well, said the keeper. He died two months ago. Died? exclaimed grandfather. Yes, sir. 
of pneumonia. This tiger was trapped in the hills only last month and he is very dangerous. Grandfather could think of nothing to say. The tiger was still licking his arm with increasing relish. Grandfather took what seemed to him an age to withdraw his hand from the cage. With his face near the tiger, he mumbled, Good night, Timothy, and giving the keeper a scornful look, walked briskly out of the zoo. Ruskin Bond, slightly abridged. Page number 64. Comprehension check. 1. Grandmother's prophecy was that the tiger, 1. would prefer Mahmood's bed to sleep in, 2. and the cook would disappear together from the house, 3. would one day make a meal of Mahmood. Mark the right answer. 2. When Timothy was about six months old, a change came over him. The phrase in italics means that 1. Timothy had grown to his full size. 2. Timothy grew more friendly. 3. Timothy grew less friendly, in fact more dangerous. 3. Write true or false against each of the following statements. 1. Timothy and grandfather went to Lucknow in a special compartment. Blank. 2. The compartment in which grandfather and Timothy travelled had no other passenger. Blank. 3. Timothy and grandfather travelled in a first class compartment. Blank. 4. All passengers in the compartment thought that Timothy was a well-fed and civilized tiger. Blank. 4. Grandfather suggested that Timothy should be put in another cage. The reason was that 1. The tiger had become very bad-tempered. 2. A leopard in the next cage would constantly rush at Timothy. 3. A cage was too small for a full-grown tiger. 5. The tiger was still licking his arm with increasing relish. The phrase in italics suggests that Timothy 1. was good-natured 2. recognized an old friend 3. smelt fresh food Page number 65 Exercise Answer the following questions. 1. Where was the tiger cub hiding when grandfather found him? 2 of 1. What did Toto do to entertain Timothy? 2 of 2. What did he do when Timothy lost his temper? 3. I became one of the tiger's favorites. Who is I in the statement? Why did he think so? 4. Where was Timothy most comfortable during the day? Where was he during the night? 5. What was grandmother's prophecy about the cook? Did it come true? 6. What made grandfather decide to transfer Timothy to the zoo? 7. Why did grandfather want Timothy to be put in another enclosure? 8. What shocked grandfather at the end? Discuss the following topics in groups. 1. Shoot animals with a camera, not with a gun. 2. Keeping pets help us become more loving and tolerant. It also helps us respect life in any form. Do you agree? 3. Have you heard of the Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals? That is SPCA. What do they do? The competition. Where's Bill today, Belinda? asked the teacher. In bed, miss, replied Belinda. Is he ill then? What is the matter with him? asked the teacher. We were having a competition, explained Belinda, to see who could lean out of the window farthest. And Bill won. Page number 66. 